Good morning, I am Jordan Branchman, and this is Auburn University. The town of Shorter is located in Macon County, Alabama, and has an estimated population of 400 citizens. Shorter is a small town that has great economic potential as it is also positioned directly off of Interstate 85 North and is located between both Montgomery and Auburn, Alabama. This semester, our Appalachian teaching project was fortunate enough to assist the town of Shorter and the town historian Dennis Powell with developing a visitor interpretive center that showcases the history, values, and community of Shorter Proudly. We were invited to research topics with historical significance to add to Shorter's comprehensive visitor center and tell the stories that are deeply ingrained in the Shorter community. Today, students in our class will provide an overview of each aspect of our work thus far. Hello, my name is Lynn Strong. Shorter is a small town on the move. For a new town, it is rich in history and helped shape Alabama. Each member of this team was assigned a significant part of Shorter's history. The Battle of Atossi and Calibi Creek took place on November 29, 1813 at a creek town near present day Shorter. The attack was part of the U.S. efforts to destroy Red Stick strongholds after a Red Stick war party massacred white settlers at Fort Mims. The Old Federal Road was a source for communication, exploration, and migration, but most importantly as a military road. The land was purchased with false promises to the Creek Indians who built taverns along the road. Part of the old federal road still exists in shorter Alabama today. Fort Decatur was an earthen fort established in March 1814 on the banks of the Tallapoosa River. Colonel John Sevier was commissioned to the fort to oversee the boundaries between the Creek Indians and the United States. On September 24, 1815, Sevier died. Since he was the first governor of Tennessee, his remains were reinterred in the Knox County court, court area in June of 1889. The remains of the fort are located at Auburn University's E.V. Smith Research Center. The Rosenwald Schools were a group of educational institutions established in the South for African Americans. These schools were built as a philanthropic effort to offer educational opportunities to rural segregated areas in the South. The schools typically have a single teacher for all grades and instruction centered around reading, writing, and arithmetic. Students were also taught farming and agricultural skills. Prairie Farms Resettlement Community was a part of the farming administration under President Roosevelt. It was established in 1937 and provided a home with electricity and a privy, a vegetable and poultry house, and a barn. Farmers were given the tools needed to survive and in very little time became sustainable working farms. In 1944, the United States government started selling the farms to private owners and the settlement was unable to continue. There is a dedicated historical marker and the community center is still in Shorter, Alabama. This small town has made significant contributions to our country's history. More people should know that Shorter really is the little town that could. My name is Kat Loftus, and in order to make sure our research makes an impact in the shorter community, we have each designed a fourth grade lesson plan centered around our topics. To prepare for this part of our project, we asked ourselves the following questions. What are the major parts of a lesson plan? And what effective strategies are employed as part of the lesson plan? From these questions, we were able to brainstorm ideas for an outline for our lesson plans. Uh, we also referred to an Auburn resource for educators titled Teaching Pebble Hill, which provided examples of lesson plans centered around primary documents. After consulting this resource, we were able to reflect on what educational practices best suited our individual topics. A general consensus from the group was that we needed to incorporate the idea of hands-on learning so that students were more engaged in the material. For example, in my lesson plan, I'm focusing on the old federal road and more specifically the taverns that were placed along, along the road. These taverns are a symbol of Southern hospitality and are home to interesting stories and traditions. In the lesson plan, students will be provided with an article which serves as a summary of the most interesting and salient parts of the research. To go along with the article, there will be images of maps as well as drawings of the taverns involved. 
These images will be presented in a Prezi style presentation and students will take a short quiz, quiz once the presentation is done that will serve as more of a reflection than a grade. Because of the conditions brought on by COVID-19, we are not going to be able to test out these lesson plans ourselves. Instead, we plan to maintain contact with educators and staff at the local school, ZZ Wolf Elementary School. <laughs> Excuse me. By making efforts to educate elementary students on local history, we are able to ensure that the lessons we've learned are not forgotten. Being a college student during a pandemic, we have had to improvise in many ways in our classes. But one of the opportunities that we were presented with was to talk with directors of interpretive centers across the United States. My classmates and I talked to directors from Ohio, Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. Each of the centers were different and unique in their own way. We collected information on each of the centers to take back to the people of Shorter to implement in their new center. Each of the, we, <laughs> we collected the information on each of the centers to take back. We had a general list of questions that we came up with together as a class and brought them to the directors via email or Zoom conference call. Although each of the centers were different, during our presentation day with the citizens of Shorter, we all agreed that there were similar items that we could bring back and take into account when we were developing the center for Shorter. One thing we agreed on was a bigger social media presence. Especially in this day and age, people are relying on the internet to give them information about places before they even start to travel there. If we encourage a bigger social media presence, this might allow us to increase the traffic into the town. Another idea we were bringing to Shorter were things to sell in the center. We came up with ideas such as postcards, mugs, t-shirts, and handmade gifts. Getting something specific from the town would allow people to make a better connection to the town. My classmates and I having the opportunity to interview these directors has allowed us to get the information from all different types of centers, but seeing that we have one common goal to cater to all different types of people. Hi, my name is Chloe McMahon. Yes. Okay. The more we researched, it became apparent that the rich history of Shorter could be better illuminated through interviewing Shorter citizens. Through listening to their gripping and sometimes moving stories, we were able to tease out some key components of what makes this community an integral and positive part of its members' lives. The first individual that we interviewed was Deza V. Howard, a resident of Shorter since he was five years old. Howard is a member of the city council, and when we spoke to him, the pride that he takes in his community was immediately evident. Shorter is a relatively new town, and he detailed the evolution of Shorter from being merely a small community with a train stop to a town committed to constant development and improvement. Interestingly, New York Times photographer Chester Higgins once visited Shorter to do a series. When we showed Higgins' photograph porch to Howard, he told us that the store the men were at had to be on either County Road 7 or Old Federal Road, as they only had two stores in the town back then. He was also able to identify the man in the middle as Lomac Lawrence. Lawrence had a daughter that was in Howard's class at school, as well as sons that Howard played baseball with. Though Howard couldn't remember the name of the man on the left, he did recall that this individual lived across from Prairie Farms, he apparently traveled around Shorter on horseback, and all the kids marveled that he was able to do so, given he only had one leg. When listening to Howard recall the stories surrounding the men in this photograph, we were taken aback by how clearly these memories stood out to him. For Howard, the town of Shorter had evolved over his lifetime, and he was a living witness to the great change that's happened in a mere handful of decades. In that moment, hearing him recall the people of Shorter now passed, the significance of documenting local history was readily apparent. We plan to incorporate these oral histories of Shorter into the Interpretive Center, catalyzing storytelling as a method to solidify the importance of cataloging local histories. The pride these individuals have in their community is, is apparent, and we hope that through sharing that pride, Shorter's Interpretive Center can foster commu community cohesion and appreciation within its future generations.
On Friday afternoons, our class gathered with Shorter and Macon County, Alabama citizens to read and discuss the novel Ollie Miss by author George Wiley Henderson. The book narrates the journey of Ollie Miss, a young woman who throughout the book dismantles women's stereotypes and misogyny in 1930s rural Macon County. Through her dedication and sharecropping labor, Ollie becomes the novel's protagonist with a desire for love and independence. The book club consisted of 11 members, four of those who are Macon County citizens, who each discussed sectors of the novel that intrigued our interests and moments within the novel that related to our lives. One of the Macon County members was Dr. Bernard Lafayette Jr., who was a leader in the Nashville lunch counter sit-ins, a freedom writer, and associate of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The citizens of Shorter informed us on homemade medicinal practices ranging from the utilization of yellow root tea to leftover cooking grease to create household cleaning products. Interacting and learning from the experiences of citizens from Macon County gave me great insight to not only the 1930s novel, Ollie Miss, but also the historical significance that is embedded in shorter Macon County, Alabama. To conclude, I would like to pass the next segment to the, to the town historian of shorter, Dennis Powell. On behalf of the town of Shorter, we are excited to enter our second phase of partnership with Dr. Wilson and the scholars of Auburn University. Our first phase of partnership was uh, to begin the restoration progress of the Cuba Hatchet African American Cemetery, which have both been a huge success and blessing for our community. We have successfully registered our future memorial as a Alabama historic cemetery, being the fourth in Macon County and the first within our city limits. As of November 10th, we received a grant from the Alabama Historic Commission for $10,000 to help us in the process of revitalizing the Cuba Hatchet African American Memorial. I would like to thank the great minds and the kind hearts that are with me today for their hard work, dedication, and innovation in helping us both develop and empower our community with a sense of pride in the illustrious history of short alabama due to us being located between the historical cities of tuskegee and montgomery the history of short alabama has often been overlooked for years and we plan to change that with the welcome center of short alabama it has been utilized it will be utilized for many purposes such as an intellectual epicenter for the citizens in our community, especially the youth. The Welcome Center will be a symbol of how history can be utilized as the backbone of a community. Visitors will experience a virtual and visual timeline of the history and how short Alabama became the town on the move. The Welcome Center will also serve as the use of tutoring and continuing the stimulation of interest in history, community, and political science that we have started with the 21st century program at Deborah Cannon Wolf. Students will be able to showcase their presentations and interpretations of the history of their community in a section entitled Les Estudions en Histoire, the Students of History. Being located off I-85 exit 22, the main intersection in the city limits the Welcome Center will be a prime location to attract thousands of visitors who stop at our gas stations such as Love's and our Quincy's Triple Seven Casino. One of the most beautiful things about partnership with Dr. Wilson and his students is to see how much both entities resemble each other. Through a sense of family, love, and respect, both transcends race, creed, religion. That's one of the beautiful things about working with them. And uh, we definitely hope that we can keep this beautiful and prosperous partnership with Auburn University for many years to come. <laughs> 